Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about family report writers and their recommendations to the court. It's an interesting topic. Um, hi, I'm Diane Simboro from Thrive After Family Violence. I am a survivor of family violence and for the past 10 years I've been working with other survivors of violence to help them to go from just surviving to actually go on and thrive. So, um, most women and children who have experienced family violence will find that they'll have to navigate the complex family court system and that's no mean feat. Um, it is desirable but it's extremely rare that those families uh, can organise suitable visitation arrangements without going to court. You know, most of the time there's a lot of your will where there's uh, family family violence involved, you know, so those, those um, families whether they like it or not, usually have to navigate the, the family court system. One of the stepping stones in the family court process is getting a family report, okay? And that's what I'll be talking about today. So report writers or family consultants that they're sometimes called, prepare reports that provide information or recommendations about parenting arrangements following separation that are, quote, in the best interests of the child or children, unquote, okay. But over the past 10 years of working with countless clients, <laughs> supporting and advocating for them on numerous on their numerous visits to the, the family court, a number of the visitation orders issued have resulted in greater risk to the children rather than lesser risk. So who determines the best interests of the children? And um, unfortunately, that, that the majority of that responsibility is on the the, the shoulders of the the family court uh, family court, uh, family report writers beg your pardon um, so um, safety concerns for the children if there are safety concerns for the children so um, I, I read this quote while while researching report writers before doing this video I did a bit of research so I will quote okay I'll read this out if the report writers have serious concerns for the safety of the children they are required to notify child safety or in some cases will not provide their report to the parents or anyone else until it is filed with the court and viewed by the judge so that the judge can deal with any safety concerns appropriately Okay, so that's the quote, but um, that is what is supposed to happen. Um, I hope it happens a lot, but I, I haven't witnessed it much, but I hope it happens much more than, than I have witnessed. Okay, um, so family report writer or family consultant, who writes a family report? It's an accredited professional uh, who is, such as a social worker or a psychologist, who's recognised by the court, okay? The report writer usually has a lot of experience in dealing with uh, children, working with children and families, okay? The court considers report writers to be independent experts in child and family matters, okay? So the family report is um, also has a purpose of um, providing the children's views um, so that they can be put before the court. So uh, look, according to the the, uh, the majority of my clients over the past 10 years, um, a, a consultation with a report writer takes about one to two hours on one day. Um, I, in my research, I found out that um, it potentially can be a series of uh, two or three consultations over two or three days. Uh, I, I haven't experienced that. My clients haven't experienced that, but apparently that is an option or that is a possibility. Um, but in my own experience and in the experience of my clients, it's around one or two, two hours of consultation on one day. Okay. Um, the report writer meets with the father and mother separately in the interview. Um, and then with the children, if the children are assessed to be of an appropriate age to be interviewed by the family report writer. The report writer will then observe the parent's interaction with those children um, for a short period of time and assess uh, how, how comfortable the children feel with their respective parent, okay? Um, the best report writers that I have seen over the past 10 years um, spend quite a bit of time researching the family history 
and reaching out to a wider circle of people such as adult siblings, um, step or half siblings, partners or grandparents, and even teachers, doctors and other relevant professionals. So quite a wide reach in order to gain as much information as possible before formulating their recommendations. Yeah? But not every report writer does this. They are busy people, I understand that, but um, if that's the ideal and I've seen a number of report writers do that so it is possible okay um, what are their considerations I'll read the list um, the the issues in the dispute the issues involved in the dispute past and present parenting arrangements um, the parenting capacity of each person each party the children's relationships with significant people meaning um, the the mother and father and grandparents etc uh, the children's wishes and views and any risks to the children. So those are their considerations. Um, in the early stages after separation, I need to mention this, in the early stages after separation, the mother may have been pressured by her ex into a fairly liberal visitation arrangement. Um, that's without the court involvement, mostly because she's afraid to say no to him. Um, the past arrangements, if they have been these liberal uh, arrangements, whether they were found to be appropriate or not regarding safety issues or the overall welfare of the children, unfortunately, can set a precedent when determining the official visitation orders set in the family court. Um, so that's an, another area that you've got to be careful of in those early stages after separation, that you don't create a hugely liberal uh, visitation arrangement because that can follow you through even if it's not appropriate even if it's not safe you know that can follow through all the way to the family court and be put into 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 an order okay um, confidential uh, confidentiality and safety concerns uh, and this is the biggest issue I think um, but I'll read this again any information provided to the family consultant is not confidential okay all information gathered by the family consultant is admissible in court and can become evidence in the case okay so the children involved um, uh, with these visitation orders that are being created they are always trying to keep themselves safe so when there is unsupervised visitation awarded to the father who has a history of family violence or abuse the children naturally have concerns about what effects their disclosures have, um, disclosures about the abusive parent, will have on their safety during future visits with that parent. Okay, so sadly in some of the cases I dealt with, um, this proved to be a justifiable concern because the abusive parent's behaviour towards those children escalated because his secret had been exposed publicly in court. Um, so you have to understand that the children want to disclose what is going on behind closed doors, but are afraid to do so because they don't know what result that is going to bring. What, what are the ramifications of them exposing a, an abusive parent's um, actions behind closed doors? and how that's going to impact their ongoing visitation. Because as I spoke about in the past several um, uh, videos, um, basically pretty much every, every guy who goes to, every abusive uh, father who goes to family court gets some sort of visitation, even if it's, uns even if it's supervised for a period of time. Um, so as I said, um, uh, my, my uh, mentor, um, she spent 27 years in, in the family court sector, saw only two men lose visitation rights with their children. Only two in 27 years. So um, that's what I'm saying. You know, the children um, have justifiable concerns about whether they will be uh, safe or not if they disclose the abusive parents' actions behind closed doors. And, and it's justifiable. Yeah. So there is one last safety mechanism um, in the family court. The judges do not have to accept the recommendations of the report writers. But in the past 10 years of my experience in family court, I've found the vast majority accept the recommendations as they are put forward and make the orders for visitation accordingly. Okay. Um, 
So in summary, report writers or family consultants are not infallible. They're people just like you and me. Um, some of the recommendations uh, made to the family court fly in the face of the evidence of ongoing family violence and, or sexual abuse of the children. And still the recommendation is for continued visitation with the abusive parent. And I find that so distressing and so confounding. I find that um, impossible to understand uh, why anybody would uh, recommend ongoing visitation where there are serious concerns about the safety of the children and the welfare of the children. And I find it equally distressing when a judge uh, with an awareness of the history of uh, uh, an abusive parent um, signs off on the orders. You know, where, if that is the safety mechanism, the judge would say, no, I don't agree with that. But um, unfortunately, I've seen cases where the judge signs off on it anyway. Uh, so this is, yeah, clearly this is an area of concern where there needs to be change and there needs to be change quickly, okay? So my videos over the past several days are part of a 30-day educational program or campaign that I'm making, which will culminate in White Ribbon Day 2021. I hope this is helpful and I also hope it's creating some awareness about the limitations of the current system and what can be done to repair it, what needs to be done. Um, there was something else I was going to say too. Um, where is it? No, I've got to go back, got to go back. What I wanted to say was, um, I haven't written it down. What I wanted to say was it would be really good if, um, the family court, um, if they would now consult with children who have been through the system and survived the system and they're mature or they're now adult, okay? And, um, and to consult with those uh, kids, they're no longer kids obviously, to consult with them and to find out what was their experience of the family court, what was their experience of enforced visitation orders, okay? And um, that is golden um, information because um, if they're adult, they no longer have the risk, they're no longer running the risk of punishment or threat from an abusive parent, you know, they're independent now. So they can fully disclose what was going on behind closed doors without fear of, of uh, uh, something happening as, in response, okay? And I really think that that would be a wonderful thing to do. That would be a wonderful form of consultation and, um, and a lot of research to be able to formulate better, um, better system of consultation in, in family court, you know, and what are the ramifications of uh, visitation orders with an, a, a, a parent who has a, a history of family violence or sexual abuse, you know. So more has to be done in that area, but I think that would be a really worthy area of research to be done, okay. So if you're interested in learning more about what I have to say, check out my website, which is howtothriveafterfamilyviolence.com. I hope, I can, uh, hope you can join me again tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time. See you next time. Bye.